Hello Grade 7. In this video we're going to do a bit of a Unit 7 recap. Now before we get into this, this is a bit of an overview. We're going to be walking through the In a Nutshell page that's at the end of our units and you'll get a chance later on to work on some review questions as well. Uh, because we are doing this remote learning, this recap is going to help us to understand percentages, but your review questions are going to really be what shows what you know from this unit. So there will not be an official test at the end of this unit. Uh, there will just be some review questions to practice the things that we've been learning. And this recap is going to uh, help remind us of some of the things that we have learned throughout the course of this unit. First, we started off by talking about what a percent was or what percentages was, were. And we talked about how just this word itself, percent, literally means per or out of cent 100. So when we're talking about a percent, we're talking about a number that is out of 100. So if you had 8%, this is the percent sign, we could rewrite that and saying that's the same as 8 out of 100. And so from there, we learned that we could turn a percent uh, quite easily into a fraction by just putting it over 100. 1% uh, was the same as 1 over 100, whereas 100% was the same as just 1 or 100 over 100. So we talked about how we can use some simplification when we're working with those, those sorts of things. Uh, we also talked about how we can express one quantity as a percentage of another. Uh, and then with that, we also talked about sort of reverse percentages. So we used kind of the language if something is a percent of something else, then in order to figure that out, or we talked also about part, percent, and whole um, in order to figure out some of these certain things. And we had a bit of a triangle that helped us to figure that out. I'm going to show you another way for those of you who are still looking for opportunities to recap part, percent, and whole. Um, so we can also talk about these kind of like ratios. So part over whole is the same as a percent over or divided by 100. This could be a really handy method for those of you that are looking for different ways um, to, to solve for what's missing. So for example, if you might remember this, let's say we don't know what the part is, we could take whole times percent divided by 100 to get our part. Uh, if you're in Mrs. Mantle's class, I know she loves to call this the fishy method. Um, and uh, hopefully this might help you. Um, whatever you're missing here, you can use this method in order to solve for whatever is missing. Uh, so let's say, you know, I, um, I know the whole and the percent, but I just don't know the part. Well, I can cross over whole times percent divided by 100 equals the part. Let's say that I know the, uh, the part and the whole, but I don't know the percent. Um, well, in this case, uh, it's 100 times the part divided by whole. So I'm going this way. Remember, we always go across first uh, with the, whatever the one is missing, go down to the whole and then move over to the side. Some of you might be saying, okay, but what happens if I'm missing, uh, what happens if I'm missing so something else in this equation? Can I rearrange? Um, and certainly you can. Um, so some of you might be saying, yeah, what happens if I'm missing whole? Uh, well, we just simply go the other way. So we do part, we go across to 100 times 100 divided by percent equals whole. So we can kind of mix this up however we want. But the key here is that whether we have the part of something, the whole of something, or the percent of something, if we have two bits of that information, we can figure out the third. And we spent the majority of this unit trying to do that and trying to solidify that. Um, so let's say, for example, you got a test back. You got uh, 20 out of 25. Uh, you want to figure out what percent that is. Well, 
We set this up as an equation. 20 is our part, that's what you got correct. 25 is the whole, that's what it's out of. You want to find the percent. We could have also just put an X there. I just put the word percent over 100. So to solve this, we take the piece that's down here, we cross it, multiply over here, divide down to get our answer. So 100 times 20 is going to be 2000 divided by 25. Uh, when I divide those out, I figure out that that gives us a percentage of 80%. And so we can use this method, we can rearrange solving for whatever we want, but this is key in trying to understand, in trying to figure out how we solve some of these questions. For those of you who might prefer the triangle method, you can go back and check out my video on that as well. Um, for those of you who prefer just using some basic formulas, you can go back and check that out in some of the previous videos too. We took this information and we said, okay, now that we know part percent and whole, where can we use this? Where are some practical ways that this can uh, come out in our lives? And we talked about percent increase and percent decrease. Um, we talked about this difference between uh, increase and increased value and percentage increase as well. Um, so we, we, we threw some formulas in. We said that increase equals increase value minus the original value. So what that just means is that if you want to figure out how much something went up by, let's say, uh, for example, that um, toilet paper, everybody wants toilet paper right now. And so you go to the store and now it costs you $30 for toilet paper. It used to cost you 20. So $30, the increased value, minus $20, the original value, gives you an increase in price of ten dollars. Uh, we can then use that information to figure out a percentage increase. So percent increase equals our increase, what we just figured out, in this case the ten dollars, divided by the original value, in this case twenty dollars, um, and then we're going to times that by a hundred percent to give us that as a percentage. Really, if uh, if you're taking a look at this, what we're doing is this formula here. We're doing part divided by whole times 100. We're not doing anything new here. We're still using all of this bit of information, all of those formulas. Just we're using that information and those formulas to solve for a specific type of question, an increase question. This would give you right, an increase of $10 over an original value of $20 gives you a percent increase of 50%. So it's a 50% increase in price. We also talked about decrease. The nice thing about decrease is that we solve it almost exactly the same way. Uh, the only difference is here when we have increase value, another term that we can figure out. We, we had it here. When we have it, when we know it, it's great. But when we don't, uh, this is another way that we can solve it. Increased value is 100% plus the increase amount um, times the original value. So for example, um, let's say it increased by 8%, then that means now it is 108% times the original. That's the increased value, it's gonna be more than that. When we talk about decrease, these two things are the same. The only thing different is the decrease value equation. And it's not very different. Decrease value, now we're talking about something going down in price. So it's going to be 100% minus the decrease times the original. So here we talked about, for example, something increased in value by 8%. So it's 108% the original. If it decreases in value by 8%, now it's 92% of the original. In other words, 100% minus 8%. And so these can kind of be uh, important bits of information when you are trying to solve uh, for increased value or decreased value. 
From there, we went on to talk about one of the key places that we see increased value and decreased value apply in the real world. And that is in tax and in discount. So when we're talking about increased value, we are talking about tax. We are adding something. I, we're adding a percentage of something. Or we're having an increase uh, amount, which is how much extra you're paying in tax on top of the original value. We also talked about discount. And discount is exactly like decrease value. Discount has you figuring out not how much more you're paying as in tax, but how much you're saving for your decrease value. Otherwise, you use these same ideas, which all uses these same ideas in order to help us better understand percentage. If you want more specifics on how to go through these, please take a look back at some of the previous videos. But hopefully this gives you a bit of a better recap as you go ahead, as you wrap up some of your understanding of percentages, about part, percent, and whole, about increase and decrease in amount, value, and percentage, and how that can be applied to both discount as well as to tax.